Hi everyone, I hope you had a fun week in Guild Wars 2 and are ready for the next healing guide. This week we will take a look at how to heal the two strikes in Secrets of the Obscure. We will start with the Cosmic Observatory, as I think it is the easier one out of the two. Let's go over what you'll need for this encounter. In short, that will be healing, but if you want to make your life easier, take a skill for ages like Advance for Guardian, Stone Spirit for Ranger, Aftershock for Elementalist, Crisis Zone for Engineer, Serpent Siphon for Necromancer, Banner of Defense if you like healing on Warrior, and you're out of luck if you heal on Thief or Revenant. Projectile Reflect will also help you for a mechanic, but you can heal through it. You can see a few examples of Projectile Reflects on the screen. Guardian has plenty of those, like Wall of Reflection, Sanctuary, Shield 5, Third Skill in F3 Tome, then you have Corrosive Poison Cloud for Necromancers, Barrier Signet for Engineers, Sublime Conversion that is on Staff 5 for Rangers, Protective Solace on Centaur for Revenants, and Sand Squall for Elementalists. Moving on to the encounter. The fight starts off easy, as Dagda will do some auto attacks that do not hit for much. Just make sure you have regen up and the group will be fine. Then at 90%, 75%, 50% and 25% she will do an attack that doesn't hit hard but can apply stacks of residual anxiety which can be fatal at 10 stacks since it turns the player hostile to others so if it happens at some point get ready to revive them. This attack also applies another debuff called debilitated. If it hits you, you shouldn't be worried as it is something the DPS roles should be worried about. After her health drops to 85%, she will start using an attack that will target one player who needs to move back from the group and not dance left and right so other players can stack in front. As I have observed, not everyone does this, which will hit the squad hard and apply a debuff called Infirmity. That will reduce the healing by 25% per stack. If the group doesn't do the mechanic, get everyone back to full HP fast. Next mechanic that you should really pay attention to is when she teleports away and spawns a well that hits hard the more you stand in it and sends projectile around. Sometimes she spawns this well without teleporting, so it is even more dangerous. Again, from experience, melee DPSs will follow and stand in it. Get ready with some ages, projectile reflects if you have them and big heals. At 75% she will become untargetable and spawn a big red AOE circle that will push you out. When you see this, prepare to top off the players that were hit harder as they need to kill the adds that spawned. Right after this, the new mechanic will be a puddle that follows a player around and adds stacks of residual anxiety and infirmity. So hope that they move away from the group and someone should pick up the white orb and shoot the puddle as it can turn players hostile and even if it doesn't, it will reduce the healing they receive. Then after 50%, the last two mechanics will get in the rotation. The first one is when half of the arena will be red and will spawn meteors that do lots of damage to everyone standing in it. So again, prepare to top off everyone. And the second one will be when she starts floating in the air and the defiance bar will appear. Do your best to break it and do some healing in the meanwhile as this will have some big hits and then if the break bar fails, it will do massive damage. All of these mechanics will repeat until she reaches 0%, so keep an eye out for them and keep your group HP up so they can take a hit or two if some mechanics cannot be avoided. Next strike is Temple of Phoeb, which can be on the more complex side, but nothing that can't be overhealed. For this encounter you will need some ages, big heals, condition cleansing and some crown control skills. For ages you can use the skills on the screen depending on the class, but keep in mind that they are not a requirement. If the group is not experienced, it will make your life easier. So you have Advance for Guardian, Stone Spirit for Ranger, Aftershock for Elementalist, Crisis Zone for Engineer, Serpent Siphon for Necromancer, Banner of Defense for Warrior, and again you are out of luck if you heal on Thief and Revenant. And for crowd control you have plenty of options. I will list a few examples like Axe Tree and Skill Tree from Tom 1 on Guardian, Celestial Avatar Skills 3 and 5 and also Warhorn 5 for Ranger, 
Cyclone in air attunement and tidal surge in water for elementalist, shield 4 and 5 for engineer, torch 5 and flesh golem for necromancer, uh, bull's charge for warrior, basilisk venom for thief, staff 5 and chaotic release for revenant. And the last thing you'll need is some conti cleanse. And do not worry, all healing specs have discovered since most of the time you can just blast light fields and that will cause area conti cleanse. Let's move on to the actual fight. You'll start off by gliding to the boss. For this phase, just focus on providing boons as healing is barely needed at the beginning. Then, when you see someone getting a green circle under them and they are not with the group, prepare for some heals as this will hit hard everyone in the squad. The boss will also get empower stacks that increases the damage which means you need to heal more. Right after this one he will use a skill that adds puddles under everyone. If some players in the squad drop this near the boss they will inflict torment to everyone that step inside them. So you can use some condi cleanse if you see someone taking too much damage. Next mechanic will happen right after when you'll see an arrow on the floor. This will be the wall mechanic and it can be very annoying. If players stand near the boss they will take continuous damage, so be prepared to heal more than usual. But if someone is hit by the wall, their boons will be turned into conditions, so prepare for the Condi Cleanse. Then he will cast a slam that does a lot of damage, but it can be blocked or dodged. So right as the telegraph is about to finish, prepare to use your Aegis skill, and if you don't have any, then run out or dodge it, and then heal everyone that didn't avoid it. And the final mechanic for the first phase will be the break bar. You do not need to heal for this phase, so you can focus on using your crowd control skills to break the bar. If this is not broken, he will stun everyone and then heal back up. When you break his defiance bar, the boss will split into 6 versions of him. You just need to go with the group and kill any of the two. But keep in mind that these mini bosses will still use the attacks that you had in the first phase. But it will happen one at a time. After you kill two of them the next phase will begin and based on what you killed the boss will have empowered skills. That means if you kill two of the six then the remaining attacks will be buffed. Like the green circle mechanic will now be bound to three players which increases the chances of doing big damage to the group. Same as last time, when you see it prepare to bring everyone back to full HP. The red circles under everyone can also be buffed which means they will be bigger in size and will last longer. Again, increasing the chances of people stepping into them, so prepare your Condi Cleanse. The wall mechanic will spawn two walls now, with one of them that will move faster and will steal boons, so the boss will do even more damage. This means you should have Condi Cleanse and heal constantly. The slam attack will be larger and you cannot block it or dodge it, so run out and heal everyone that didn't make it out. And these attacks will repeat until he reaches 50%, and you need to break his defiance bar again. If you don't, he will heal up, so use all your crowd control skills. Then once again stay with the group and focus on keeping up the boons and hitting the embodiments. Once they are dead, go back to the boss and focus on the mechanics like in the previous phase. The only change that will occur is that other attacks can be empowered. Then the final mechanic will start at 10% when he starts using his enraged smash constantly. Depending on how many mechanics were failed, this can hit very hard or do some mild damage, so your job is to focus on healing and if that is not needed, hit the boss hard so that it dies faster. And that is it, you have healed through the new strikes from Secrets of the Obscure. I hope this guide was helpful and if you have any questions you can let me know in the comment section below. If you want to see more content like this, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, please click the like and subscribe buttons.